we got this camera where it's going to work good. Um, I'm going to do another educational video on uh, motorcycles. And this will be about tips and stuff that I've used um, on how to purchase a used motorcycle from an individual. Uh, I've wrote this article a while back while I was off for work for a back injury. Uh, I have bought and sold hundreds of motorcycles and vehicles, new and used. I have worked at four dealerships, um, only one of them worth a crap, and have learned um, what to look for, uh, you know, and what to look in, you know, what we call looking, how to look in between the lines and see what other people miss and so I'm gonna do a uh, video up of tips and stuff uh, for you guys first of all when you're dealing with uh, used cars motorcycles whatever look over the title and make sure it's not altered do do not every grab a, a salvage title uh, make sure the liens are off it liens will be on the front of the front of it, usually pretty bold, right underneath the address. Uh, do not accept the title that's been signed on the back because uh, your local DMV will kick you out or double, triple, quadruple the price of getting that title done. Only accept titles that are in the seller's name and address. Um, use NADA or Blue Book, Kelly Blue Book. Um, now you're going to find out on this. Um, the first year that a bike is out, um, will sometimes resale value, or the or the book value, you won't you won't believe this, will actually be higher than it is retail. Now the first four years after new, the bike the uh, bikes and vehicles their value remains rather high. And uh, I've seen them, the value retained so high that it's actually higher than a year-end model of a current model. It sounds strange, but for the first four years, um, resale value remains high. Then after the fourth year, it drops like a rock. Um, uh, this is an important one that we learned um, you need to turn the steering wheel or turn the handlebars and get get down there along the neck of the frame look for peeled paint cracks that's a very important safety check especially on sport bikes check that neck out um, we had a guy bring a Gixxer in a Gixxer 1000 in that was absolutely gorgeous but when gorgeous, but when you turn it that way, there was a quarter inch crack down the neck of it. Um, on all your bikes, you're going to have a vent on the frame, on the neck area, and there's going to be a vent on the motor. You need to look at both of them, make sure they're there, um, to make sure nobody's painted over the vent on the frame. Um, and do your research before going and looking at a motorcycle. Don't don't walk in blind. You're you're screwing yourself by doing that. Um, does the bike have good reviews? Is it easy to get parts for? Uh, European models over here in the states are hell to get parts for. I made a mistake of buying a BMW, and you can't find parts. Um, the state next to me does not have any dealers, um, BMW dealers whatsoever. Uh, and the fact that there's, um, oh, the, rep the closest repair uh, is three hour drive. Um, that's things that I should have thought of um, before I was fooled into thinking I was buying a good. Um, good manufactured bike. It was. It's not the seller's fault. It's the manufacturer's fault. 
on mine. Um, also look up, it's easy to look up, look up how many recalls on, on that bike. Ask the seller if it's ever been wrecked or dropped. Be aware that the seller may lie. An easy way is to take the palm of your hand, which is usually rather smooth. Go along the edges of the, like the handlebars, where the grips are, you could feel roughness. Get over there to where your, uh, you break your clutch and brake lever are at, and feel the ends of them. Take your palm, you know, smooth part, and run down the edges of your um, of the fairing and stuff like that. That will tell you, you know, you'll get you get scratched. You get to know if the bike's been down. You know, um, that's something that the seller may lie to you about too. Visually look around behind and through, you know, the stuff on the motorcycle. Uh, for cut and spliced wires. Look for black electrical tape that's been wrapped around stuff that people go in and start cutting wires and they're thinking they're fixing things and they just start screwing crap up. I went and looked at a bike uh, up in Missouri and I turned the steering head and looked up underneath through it and there was all sorts of cut wires and spliced and taped and I just had to apply, you know, I politely just excused myself. I said, this, this is going to need more work than what I want to work, do with. Um, after you drive and park the bike, um, sit a while, you know, walk around, drink a soda or whatever, but come back and look if there's leaks coming out of the bike. A bike will always leak after you do a ride. Um, something to remember. Uh, how are you going to transport the bike? You know, take it home. Do you have tie downs? Do you have a trailer? Uh, I've sold many a four wheeler to people that did, you know, come there to buy, buy one, and never have tie downs or a trailer or nothing like that. Have it bounce around in the back of the truck. Now, um, when you're going to, to buy a motorcycle, hide the cash until the deal is done and you have reviewed the title, you know, do stuff like that for your safety. Bring a flashlight, look into the gas tank for rust. Um, there were some um, Victory models out there that the liners, all the tanks were li lined on the Victory models, but they, the liner was coming undone and causing, uh, that, that got a recall on that. Rub your hands over the tires and feel for cupping. Um, it's front and rear. They'll give you an idea of how the person ma maintained the vehicle, the bike. If it has a round cup, that means the uh, tire was underinflated. And if it if it has ledges, when you rub your hand across, it has ledges. It's been overinflated, run, uh, run overinflated. Um, Stick your finger in an oil check hole and get some oil on your fingers and just smear it out like that. Look for oil, you know, metal particles. You know, if it looks like uh, somebody's put um, sprinkles on your finger, you know, walk away. Be, when you're looking over the bike, be aware if the seller is trying to distract you while you're inspecting the motorcycle. That could be their way of getting the attention away from from problems. I've, I've had people do that before. Uh, be aware when you show up that there's a group or a gang of people uh, getting your attention on things and away from problems and intimidating you and stuff like that. You know, that's when you say to the buyer, said, uh, just me and you is gonna do the deal, get, get everybody the hell, the hell out of here. Um, you know, you're there to buy, you're there to buy, do business. You're not there to be entertained. Um, try to get the seller to be the only one to answer questions and try to get the seller to be quiet when you're inspecting. You know, while you're inspecting the bike and going over things, if they're coming up there and they're slapping you on your back and, hey, buddy, you know, how about this and how about that, you know, they're taking your attention away from problems with the bike. Um, 
when you're looking at the bike, you know, just say, tell them nicely, say, kick back over there. Uh, I'm going to go through some things, take, take a look. There's some good, um, if you go to the web, there's a lot of good uh, sites out there that'll print out a, de a description of what you need to check. And please feel free to do that. The Goldwyn Road Riders has an, uh, an excellent one uh, on their website. Please do stuff like that. That way you can check stuff off, you know, take your little pen and start checking stuff off. Does all the controls work? Look for frayed cables, pull that little rubber back. Um, look at rubber hoses showing cracks from aging and stuff like that. Um, this may sound funny to you, but when you show up to, you know, look at or possibly buy a bike, don't show up looking like a bum. Um, uh, the reason is, is that if you, if you look good, it makes a good impression upon them people um, that you may want to buy from. That's part of the dealing process. That's a psychological thing. Like I said, I've been in sales a long time and it may, it may help you out on a deal. When you show up, greet the seller as he's, as, like he's a good friend. Make a good impression on him. Uh, don't cuss. Try not to smoke or spit or uh, chew tobacco or talk with a bad slang in, and stuff like that around, around them when you're first meeting them and all and getting to know them. First impressions are really good. I mean, we're talking stuff that's going to help you. He's going to give you a good deal if he likes you. That's what I'm trying to say right there. If you look good, smell good, you know, uh, that helps all in the process. Now here's a given. Assume that all sports bikes and off-road bikes have been abused. So... You know, uh, the possibility of finding a sport bike that hasn't been thrashed, you know, that doesn't have valve float or problems and stuff like that is very, very nil. If the bike is expensive, acquire your financing before you go look at the bike and shop for good rates, interest rates on your loans and stuff like that. Research, research, research. Book values, option values, version values, mileage condi values, conditions from NADA and Kelly Blue Book. Have your ducks in a row. Pile your information up, you know, get your pages out and have your information ready to, to go when you go to deal and look at your motorcycle. On heavy motorcycles and sport bikes, try to check for neck bearing slack. It's kind of hard to do. You're going to be pushing back and forth and while you're turning at the same time. Um, big heavy bikes have problems with bearing slack, but there's a lot of good um, all balls kits out there to fix a lot of problems like that. But that's something else to let you know if the bike's been abused. Um, when you have doubt of your ability to inspect a motorcycle, ask that guy, said, hey buddy, would you drive that over here to the local uh, motorcycle shop and you walk up and ask a mechanic to look at it and a lot of times mechanics will do this for free slide that mechanic at 20 bucks or you know or give him a soda or something like that thank him for his time because a good a good mechanic can save your butt on inspecting a bike. So you need to do that. Um, there's a certain kind of motorcycle out there that a lot of people are goo goo and gaga over. And everybody says that motorcycles are not supposed to leak oil, but this certain kind was made to leak oil. Uh, it was to keep it a, a, a certain kind of chain lubed. And uh, so it's, they're supposed to make a little, you'll see a few drips in one area, and that's nothing to worry about on that, on that certain model. Okay, here's one that, um, if a bike's been 
wrecked and repainted and they try to match the painter if they didn't paint everything you know and tried all they did was repaint the uh, like say the tank and they didn't do the side covers and stuff with it you can usually get at a little bit of a distance and turn uh, view it from uh, you know the sun bouncing off it and you can see mis mismatched paint and other stuff like that and that helps you look for uh, if it's been wrecked or repaired um, I talked about this earlier fuel injected motors uh, motorcycles the last few years have got liners and or lined the fuel tanks take a flashlight look down the side there make sure the liner is not coming loose from inside the metal tank that'll stop a lot of problems bring back rags to wipe your hands with not letting and if you're not getting your hands dirty you're not looking over the motorcycle well um, if you go to a person's residence and the motorcycle is in the shop or the garage um, get it out so you can get at it and look it to the sun in the sun you know where you can look around it and check in it some more I've been to places where people have stuck a motorcycle into a garage and then just thrown tons of crap on it and I said hey hey bud I'd, you know I'd like to check the bike out and can we get it out pull it out I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that I ain't you, know, you gotta buy it as it is walk away you know that guy messed up that's you, you know a person selling shouldn't have that idiot attitude but I've seen it um, uh, something to consider if the seller lives in a bad neighborhood have the seller drive the motorcycle to a more secure area that you can review the motorcycle in safety any cop uh, station will allow you especially doing you know person to person uh, trading of products will allow you to go in their parking lot for safety reasons and they welcome you to do that you know go to the go to the uh, go to the far end of a Walmart parking lot or a grocery store parking lot you know some place you feel safer um, while you're at it always remember to bring your helmet jacket and gloves for a test ride before you go over on a test ride go over and familiarize yourself with all the controls because every model is different um, I like the ones that have the um, turn signal on one thing the beamers are on two different ones so are the Harley Davidson's but everybody else is all on one and the controls on a beamer are way different way totally different uh, and you got to familiarize yourself before you go on a test ride. Um, now, on a test ride, we, what you really want to do is vary, vary the ride. Number one, you want to pretty much start with a cold motorcycle. That way, you can hear some really bad problems. If, if they're going to show up, they're going to show up cold. You start off on a test ride, try to do Highway City stop and go slow speed maneuvers high speed maneuvers and go through all the gears and everything like that you're testing everything on the bike to make sure it checks out okay um, if you don't have the original owner's manual then there's a lot of them that can be printed off the web uh, or downloaded usually um, ask how often they change the differential oil uh, on their motorcycle if it's got a differential on it and to be honest and a word of advice to everybody change your differential oil every time you change your uh, um, motorcycle oil people don't believe it but that'll make that rear end live a lot longer uh, web forums are a great way uh, there's every mod motorcycle and model out there has a web form out there dedicated to it and there's mounds of information out there and sometimes all you gotta do is just research and any questions you may have usually has been answered ten times over um, the folks that are selling usually do not sell stuff a lot and 
I've noticed that um, they think that you know selling is an easy process and it's not and these folks that are selling get mad and pissed off you start asking all these questions and stuff like that and when they get mad and pass, pissed off I get whoa I can apply my psychological techniques. I said, whoa, dude, I'm looking at buying a, a motorcycle here and I don't want to get screwed. And I think you're an honest guy and you're not going to screw me. So, you know, you got to work with me. You got to work with me. And and that's, that's the techniques you got to do. You do that and, and calm person down and they're going to, if they're not mentally messed up, they're going to understand what you did and probably re reward you in the end. Maybe. <laughs> um, but also you got to understand that that person selling has got all these idiots coming by and in the South down here, the way people buy things is they scream and holler, you know, rawr, 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 you know, just doing idiot things like that. And so these people that don't sell all the time, they get really chafed bad at hearing that kind of stupid crap come at them. So that's why I'm telling you, when you go to look, go to look and then looking to buy, don't p pull that crap in front of people. You know, uh, I would punish people that come and piss me off, especially at the dealership. They don't know it, but I would punish people that come and piss me off at the dealership. Um, you know, it's up to the seller, too, and if the seller gets mad, you know, I've done this before. Hey, bud, uh, I don't like your damn attitude. There's an extra $2,000 added uh, for a piss-off fee. You don't like it, there's the damn highway. You know, if you're selling, um, people make you mad, tell them to get down the road. There's always another person down there, out there. You just have to advertise and get that bike out there. Get get your get your word out. Um, if you're if you're selling. Uh, if you're buying, don't act that way, and you'll get a lot further down the road. Like I said, I've uh, I've looked at maybe 10, 20 motorcycles before I buy one. So, you know, and, and I leave the people on a good term because there may be somebody that I do know that's looking for that bike, or or where I could direct him to where somebody that will buy his bike, you know. I could do stuff like that. Uh, as I said earlier, do your research. Print out all your information before seeing the seller and the motorcycle. This is a tip to the seller. Uh, starts gabbing on about what they know about the motorcycle. and So that way, you as the buyer, if they start telling you misinformation, wait a minute, bud, you know, look right here. That's what you said is BS. You ever print out any information that is known right there because young guys will always lie about the horsepower levels. Oh, I got a, you know, just here 600 and it's putting out 10 gazillion horsepower. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, it doesn't. Um, and also, here's a big one. Here's a big one. Sellers always, you know, they'll have a bike that's a couple years old. Well, it's a collector's item. Bull crap. Uh, the only bikes that are collector's items are very old Indian and very old Harley Davidson. And take out your phone, pull it up, you know. Ask it right to his face, you know, ask Siri. Hey, Siri, is a, is a late model Suzuki a collector's item? And wait for Siri to say, oh, hell no. You know, 
so don't ever fall for the collector's item crap. Um, here's here's something that people do that really piss me off is they take a complete running motorcycle and I don't know how these idiots out here got the got these ideas but these people think that hey I'm gonna make lots of Mione or what they call Kiash selling taking this running motorcycle stripping it to pieces and selling parts I'll sell it here spark plug for twenty dollars and they make no money and they have a tore apart motorcycle and they've got a big mess right there never ever ever take a motorcycle apart that's running and if it isn't running spend a little bit of money get it running and sell it a running and a rideable bike is much more useful than a pile of parts and don't ever think that taking anything apart and selling parts is going to make you money. It doesn't. That's idiot's fallacy. Uh, like I said, get your checkoff list and go through that. That's a great way to help you out doing stuff like that. Now, it's tougher to buy used than new. Why? The used seller don't care about your feelings. New them guys do care about your feelings somewhat but that's some of the things you have to commit consider about when buying used but I've years of experience in dealing with people and gave everyone here some great information so hopefully this will help you out and you guys will get the bike that you want so uh, take this stuff uh, it's good information go out and buy the bike you want See you on the next video.